when we are learning to name ionic compounds or come up with their formulas, we are going to see that the formulas are such that the charges cancel to zero. And what we're going to do is look at the periodic table and look at the charges. And then we're going to make a distinction between two types of metals and two types of nonmetals. So when we get the periodic table, this bold line separates the metals from the nonmetals. And hydrogen really is not a metal. So we will not be dealing with hydrogen uh, in an ionic compound. An ionic compound always has a metal. For example, like sodium. The ion sodium is a plus one. And chloride, the ion minus one. So all of these types of compounds are always going to have a metal, which is going to be to the left of the stair steps, and a nonmetal. The nonmetal may be a symbol like chloride, or it may be a polyatomic ion. And so that's what we're going to make the distinction on. And we're going to see there are two types of metals. And so I'm going to call the simple type just a metal. This is a metal that's always a plus one, a plus two, or a plus three. In other words, there's only one possible charge on the metal. So a simple metal is a metal that's in column one or column two, or aluminum, which is a plus three, or zinc, or silver. The other type of metal, so I'll put a little number there, the other type of metal is this, a transition metal. So I'm going to use that uh, word, write it down, but we're going to call that TM. And here the charge varies. So these metals have a variable charge. For example, iron can be a plus two or iron can be a plus three. So a transition metal, the name is going to include the charge. So Fe plus 2 is iron 2. Fe plus 3 is iron 3. So when we learn to name, the first thing we have to distinguish is what type of metal do we have. Do we have a metal whose charge we always know? these three, or column one or column two, or is it a transition metal? So uh, if it is a transition metal, then the charge can vary. And we know that because we don't have a charge written above any of these columns. OK, now there are two types of nonmetals. So the two types of nonmetals a symbol on the periodic table turns into an ide. That means Cl minus is chloride. And when we see a minus, we may not necessarily include the one. But a minus sign all by itself would be a minus one. So S with a minus two charge is sulfide. So the two types of metals, uh, we're going to see one, or the two types of nonmetals, one of them is going to be just a symbol on the periodic table. So it's going to be an ide or a group. So the polyatomic ions, this is sulfate. So I'm going to call these the eights. This is nitrate. And phosphate, and this is chlorate. So the two types of nonmetals are either going to be an ide, which means it's a symbol all by itself, or it's going to be an eight, which means it's a group. And the way we name ionic compounds is we always name the metal sodium, and then we name the nonmetal. 
We get sodium with chloride and sodium chloride. We could also have sodium with chlorate. We could also have iron 2 chloride or iron 2 chlorate. So for naming or coming up with the formulas for ionic compounds, we're going to make the distinction between what type of metal it is. It's either a column 1, column 2, or one of these three metals, or a transition metal. And then this, the ides, I'm going to call these the non-metals. So the non-metals end in ide, and I'm going to call these a poly, for a polyatomic ion. 